Hello, and welcome to this midweek message from Myerstown Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Dennis, and it's good to have you uh, viewing this, and uh, hopefully the message will speak to you as you uh, live through all the things that are happening this week. This coming Sunday is Mother's Day, so my message this week is going to focus around the idea of Mother's Day, and specifically about honoring our mothers. I invite you to hear some words from Proverbs chapter 23, verses 15 through 16 and 22 through 25. My child, if your heart is wise, my heart will be glad too. My soul will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous will gladly rejoice. He who begets a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. Well, that fifth of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20.12 is the one that says, Honor your father and mother. This coming Sunday, of course, as I said, is Mother's Day in case you might have missed that. So I've been thinking about ways we can honor our mothers in these days of COVID-19 and social distancing. My mother is 91 years old and is a resident in one of the greenhouses at Londonderry Village in Palmyra. On the one hand, I am thankful for the steps the village has taken to protect its residents from the virus. But on the other hand, it's been nearly two months since I've seen my mother. We talk on the phone, but it's not quite the same as an in-person visit. I bought her a card and will mail it today or tomorrow, and I'll call her on Sunday, but it's just not the same as visiting her or taking her out for dinner. The situation we find ourselves in these days has got me to wondering, what does it mean to honor your mother? Under normal circumstances, I suppose cards, flowers, dinner out, or a family gathering are great ways to recognize her on this day. But is that really honoring her? To me, to honor someone involves more than just doing something nice for them. Well, this second Sunday of May was officially proclaimed Mother's Day in the United States in 1914. And like so many of these special days we recognize throughout the year, it's become one of those hallmark card days. It's become commercialized, and the concept of honoring has come to mean doing or buying something for our mothers. And like so many other special days, our consumer culture tells, tells us if we really want to honor them, we'll buy her diamonds or take her to the best restaurant or buy her two dozen roses, not one, but two. Culturally, we've been led to believe that these are the ways we honor our mothers. Actually, I think this particular message may be more for us children, no matter what our ages, than it is for our mothers. So really, in reality, it's for all of us, because we're all children of a mother, right? And if we truly honor our mothers, that demonstration of honor will have a lasting impact it won't be a one-day occurrence. It will last throughout the year. It will last for a lifetime. And if we honor our parents according to the biblical principles, we'll also be honoring God, and we will set our own lives on the right path. Much of the book of Proverbs is a compilation of wise sayings by King Solomon. And frequently he refers to my sons, emphasizing his words are words of instruction or guidance. His words were to guide them in a way of life that leads to wisdom, to joy and happiness. My child, Solomon says, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. If you invest yourself in truth, wisdom, discipline, good judgment, then your mother and your father will rejoice. As a parent, I can identify with these words from Proverbs. If your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad. 
when I see my children investing themselves in truth, wisdom, discipline, and good judgment, then I also rejoice. You see, we honor our parents not so much by what we do for them, but by who we are, by the qualities of character we develop within ourselves. Many of the Proverbs speak of wisdom. Wisdom isn't an intellectual quality. Some of the most intelligent persons I've known have demonstrated the least amount of wisdom. Rather, wisdom is a moral quality. Wisdom is demonstrated in personal discipline and by good judgment. Wisdom produces personal well-being, happy relationships, and a productive life. There's a chart in my study Bible that is titled, The Wise Man According to Proverbs. And it says that according to Proverbs, the wise person demonstrates wisdom in their character by being teachable, by doing what is right. In other words, loving God, shunning evil, speaking the truth. A wise person, Proverbs says, is humble, self-controlled, has a calm spirit, is slow to become angry. In their actions, they think before they act. They're forgiving, patient, and not vindictive. In their relationships, they first of all trust in God and are mindful of God's presence and choose God's ways and submit to God's discipline. To their family, they demonstrate respect. They seek to bring honor and joy to their parents. The wise husband loves his wife, trusts her, appreciates her, and is faithful to her. The wise parent loves their children, trains and disciplines them, and provides for their needs. To their friends and neighbors, they strive for peace in their relationships and practice honesty and sincerity in those relationships. In their speech, the wise person recognizes the power of words and seeks to control their tongue. They are honest, not boastful, not argumentative, not a gossip. In conversation, they are calm, rational, gentle, and yet can be persuasive. A long list of qualities. So I wonder, who of us is wise, according to Proverbs? I doubt any of us can say we demonstrate wisdom all of the time. Those of us who have been around long enough to know, understand that wisdom is something that comes with some life experience. But we also know that the sooner we find wisdom, the better off we will be. So where can we find this kind of wisdom? The writer of Proverbs also gives us some clues. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom, and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I really like Eugene Peterson's paraphrase in James 3, 13, 17, the message. He writes, Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning, devilish conniving. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get, a, get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life 
and is characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings, not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. So what kind of wisdom guides your life? Do you find in most of your relationships that things go from one crisis to the next? That they always feel like they're falling apart and you're always getting at each other's throats? Or do you find real peace in your relationships? For the most part, you get along and people respect you and you respect other people and your relationships bring blessing to your life. What kind of wisdom guides your life and your relationships, especially that relationship with your mother? If you're finding you might need to make some changes, let me suggest you take a mother's advice. Actually, the mother, the mother of our Lord Jesus. One day she, along with Jesus and his disciples, were at a wedding. Must have been a big wedding or the planners did some very poor planning. They ran out of wine. So Mary asked Jesus to do something about it. At first he was reluctant. But Mary, being a mother, was persistent. And in a little aside comment to the servants, she said these profound words. Do what he tells you. Paul says that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 1.24. In Colossians 2.3, he says, In him, in Christ, lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You want to find wisdom? Do whatever he, Jesus, tells you. Well, speaking as a parent, and I think I could well be speaking for almost all parents, my sons, my daughter, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. When I see you honoring God and setting your life on the path toward personal well-being and happy relationships, my heart will be glad indeed. Please, if you're blessed, to have a living mother. Send her a card. Send her flowers. But most of all, all of us, we honor our mothers and our fathers, not so much by what we do for them, but by who we are. We honor our parents by the godly character we develop in ourselves. And that is possible even in the midst of a pandemic. To teens and younger children, You can best honor your mother and your father by taking the time to learn biblical wisdom, by making wise choices, choices made according to the principles and the teachings of Jesus, choices which will lead to personal well-being, happy relationships, and a productive life. To young parents, guide your children now into the ways of the Lord so they have a foundation on which they can make wise choices when they're faced with the pressures of peers and the culture around them. To those of you who may not have happy memories of your mother, let this godly wisdom guide you into a spirit of forgiveness and peace. One more word of advice from King Solomon. In Ecclesiastes 7.12, he says, Wisdom and money can get you almost anything but only wisdom can save your life. Honor your mother. Show your love by what you do. Honor her by who you are, a person of wisdom, character, integrity, and love. Let's pray. God, thank you for our mothers, those who gave us birth and nurtured us into the ways of godly wisdom. Bless our mothers with your grace, mercy, and love, and teach us your ways that we may love them as we have been loved. We pray for ourselves, that we may honor our mothers by the way we live, that we, that who we are will give them joy and happiness. Forgive us where we fail to live in ways that honor our mothers. In these days of COVID-19, we pray for those who are sick, hospitalized, 
or confined to home. Bring healing, we pray. Be with doctors, nurses, first responders, as they risk their own safety to serve others, and give them your peace. We pray for your church. Strengthen our witness for you in these troubling times. Unite us in a common purpose and mission. God, again, bless our mothers. May we truly honor them by being the people you would have us be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless, and hopefully I'll see you online on Sunday. Go in peace.